We're here to talk vector textures again, but this time I'm going to show you how to make your own from scratch. So a while back, I showed you guys how to easily apply vector textures to your designs. If you haven't seen that yet, click this bad boy right here. You may even want a refresher after this video is done. But what if you haven't gotten that far? Let's say you haven't found a vector texture that you like, or you may not feel like spending the money on an expensive vector texture pack. Well, I'm going to show you guys a quick and dirty way to make these things yourself using Photoshop, Illustrator and your phone. And speaking of which, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of killer classes so that you can learn pretty much anything that you can think of. Like I said, we're using Photoshop and Illustrator today, so if you need to get a little bit more familiar with those before we get started, Skillshare is definitely the place to do it because there is a ton of super, super helpful classes to help you learn everything that you need to know about them. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I've used Skillshare a ton to learn everything that I need to know about using those two apps here on a daily basis. And since they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare is giving the first two months away for free to the first 1,000 of you guys who join up using the link below. So make sure to check that out. It gets two thumbs up from me. With that said, let's get into this. Texture is literally all around us, so we really don't have to look too far to find things that will make cool vector textures. One of the easiest things to make cool vector textures out of is concrete. It always makes a really cool grunge effect and it's super easy to work with because it has so much contrast. So I'm gonna grab a few shots of the different concrete textures around me. We have the sidewalk, we have the street, we have this little walkway that I'm standing on, we even have the brick on the side of my house. Just look around for anything with interesting textures to it. You can use concrete, wood, trees, rocks, fabric, old paint, dirty windows, shit you can even use the side of your cat. You can make these things out of literally anything if you're creative enough. The reason why I'm using my phone is because we really don't need to get too fancy about it. Of course, I could be Captain Overkill like I usually am and pull out all my big camera gear and make a whole production here, but I would really be kind of wasting my time just because of the way these textures are made. Now, I'm not saying you can't. You absolutely can do that. You can pull out all the lights and fancy cameras and set something up to pull some insane detail to make some really, really cool textures, which I will show you how to do at some point, but not everyone has that at their disposal. We do all have one of these. So let's use them for more than just sitting on the toilet and swiping through Tinder. So now that we have our shots of seemingly random stuff, let's bring one into Photoshop. Before I start this off, I'm going to say that there is a really quick and easy way and there's a way that's slightly more advanced, but it's really not that much more difficult and only takes an extra minute or two. I'm going to show the more advanced way. This is the way that I normally do it because I find it pulls a little bit of extra details out of the image and well, I'm all about those details. But if you're looking for really quick, really easy, maybe you're just really not interested in going that far with it, you can just go ahead and skip this first part and get onto the easy version. So I've picked out one of my images and dragged it into Photoshop. I'm pretty sure this is the walkway in front of my house, but what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna equalize the image. And what that does is kind of flattens it out a little bit, evens things out and boosts the sharpness and contrast. There is a quick menu option that does this under image adjustments, I believe, but it really doesn't do that great of a job. Nowhere near as good of a job as doing it manually. So to do this, I'm gonna click the background layer here and I'm gonna hit Command J and duplicate it a couple times. That way I still have the original to go back to if I need. Next, I'm gonna select that first copy that we made and I'm gonna go up here to filter and hit blur and average. And I'm gonna deselect the layer over top of it so we can see what we did. Um, what that's gonna do is it's gonna fill it with solid color, which is usually the most common tone from that image. Then I'm gonna select the layer above it. I'm gonna unhide that thing. We're gonna go back up to filter again and we're gonna go to other and choose high pass. And we're gonna set this to anywhere between 150 to 300 pixels. It's really gonna depend on your image. You can kind of just freestyle this part until it just looks right to your eye. I think I'm gonna go with somewhere around 200. Let's go with like, I don't know, let's say 220, call it 220, hit okay. That's all we need to do there. So with that part done, now we're gonna change this layer's blending mode. So make sure that layer is still selected. We're just gonna click this little drop down menu where it says normal and scroll down to where it says linear light. And now you can see this image is sharp and contrasty as all hell. So <laughs> we're gonna take the opacity slider and we're just gonna back that down a bit until it feels a little bit more like the original image. I do like to leave it a little bit sharper than the original, but this is another thing where you're just gonna kind of go with what you feel. So I'm gonna bring this down to like, I don't know, 70, 75%. Let's, let's say 70%, that looks pretty good to me. And now let's check out what we did. Let's bring this background layer over top of what we just did. And now you can see 
this thing's not too sharp. Uh, the shadows and stuff are all over the place. The highlights are all over the place. Let's hide that now. And now you can see the other image is completely flattened out, nice and even, and this is gonna give us a much better texture. So that's all done, we're happy with it. I can get rid of this background layer. We don't need that anymore. And we're gonna hold shift and select the two layers that we just made and right click and go over to where it says merge layers. We're also going to go image adjustments and desaturate to pull all the color out of it because we're making a texture here, so we don't need any of that. Next, we're gonna start playing with the levels. So we're gonna go up here to image, adjustments and levels, which will pull this window up. And now this is where the texture really starts to take shape and how you adjust these levels will play a pretty big part in what it will look like in the end. And you could actually get multiple textures from this one image just by changing these levels around. To do this, we're gonna play around with the sliders for the shadows, which is this one over here on the left, and the shadows for the highlights, which is this one over here on the right. The one in the middle is for the midtones, which will make a little bit of a difference, but the bulk of the work is gonna be done with the other two. So in most cases, I'll start by taking the shadows slider and I'm gonna start just cranking that up to really start boosting the blacks, really adding a lot of contrast to this thing. So I'm gonna probably put it somewhere around there. And then I'm gonna take the highlight slider. I'm gonna start backing that down towards it to really start blowing out all the white areas and really start to create some separation here. So somewhere, I don't know, probably right around there. As for this mid-tone slider, this is gonna be another one of those things where you kind of just go with what you feel. So if you see here, if I start backing it down towards the shadow slider, it really breaks this thing up a lot. It really starts giving it a lot more breathing room. It makes a little bit of a lighter texture. And if I start bringing it up towards the highlight slider, it really starts adding a lot more stuff to it, which is gonna make it a little bit of a heavier texture. And actually with that being said, again, we can change the entire look of this thing if we want to. So let's say we wanna make a really heavy handed, really solid texture. We could bring these highlights back up and we could really, really crank these shadows up here, like way up like this. And then again, start backing down the highlights towards it and put the mid-tones kind of wherever we want, somewhere around there. Now, see here, we've got an entirely different look to this thing than what we started with. What you do here is really gonna depend on what kind of image you have to work with, what kind of texture you're going for in the end, what kind of design that texture is going on to. So really just kind of mess around with these things and have fun with it. My goal here is just to make a really kind of subtle texture. So I'm gonna back these sliders down to somewhere around, I don't know, I'm gonna go with like that and I think that's probably kind of what I want. So once you've got the levels adjusted how you like them, I'm cool with this, so I'm just gonna hit okay. And I'm also gonna crop this into a square. Now, don't ask why I do this. I really have no reason for it at all. I just do it. So uh, I'm gonna go up here just where it says one, one. I'm gonna move this around to probably like there looks right to me so we can get rid of some of that weird stuff at the bottom. Hit enter. Now I'm gonna make sure that layer is still selected. I'm gonna hit command A, which is select all. And then I'm gonna hit command C to copy it. And now we can go over to Adobe Illustrator, which I already have a window open and ready to go. And we're gonna hit command V to paste that, which it's gonna be huge as hell. <laughs> so just make sure it's uh, scaled down to whatever size you want it to be. This artboard I think is like 13 by 13. So we'll scale it back up afterwards because we're making this a vector and it really doesn't matter. So let's turn this into a vector. And we're gonna do that by using the image trace function. And yes, I know I've talked numerous times about how much I hate the image trace function being used in any sort of design, but I will admit this is definitely one legitimate use for it. To do that, we're just gonna click on the image which selects it, and we're gonna go up here to this menu bar and click on image trace, hit okay, and let it do its thing. Once it's done, you're gonna go back up here to this top menu, and you're gonna click on this little square thing, which is the image trace panel with all your adjustments in it. Open that up, and then go down to this little advanced thing and click the drop down menu as well. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can see what we're making. Um, the first thing you wanna do is make sure preview is selected at the bottom here, which mine is. The next thing you wanna do is click off this one here where it says ignore white. We definitely want to ignore the white because we don't need that part. We're just trying to get the black parts, which is going to be our texture. And then once that part is done, we're also going to click off this one thing here where it says snap curves to lines, which is going to straighten out any of the nice rounded parts we have of this thing. We don't want that. We want to make sure any of the rounded parts look round. We want to make sure any of the square parts look square. So just deselect that and you're good to go. So we're almost there, but we're just going to mess around with these sliders a little bit. And this part can really, really bog down your CPU depending on how crazy your texture is and how good of a computer you're actually using. Honestly, 
even some of the best hardware out there can slow down doing this, so just have a little bit of patience. So we'll start off here with the threshold slider, and what this does is it gives you more or less information from the original image. So usually the default setting is pretty good, but let's say you wanna have less information from the original image, so we would just back it way down to here. Or if you wanted to get way more of the information from the original image, we would just slide it up here to where it says more. I'm gonna go back to the default setting, which looked really good to me, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Next, we got the path slider, and this one, it really doesn't do a whole lot in the case of textures, and all it's gonna do is slow your computer down even more, so just leave that one alone. Next, we've got the corner slider, and this one will determine how smooth or how jagged our texture is gonna be. So with this kind of a texture that's already pretty jagged, and also image trace kind of makes things jagged as it is, um, I generally, with this one, I just back it all the way down to the bottom, or I'll just leave it at like five, 10%. So let's bring it down to five, leave it at that. And last, we've got the noise slider. And what this one will do is take care of all the tiny details in our texture by limiting the size of the pixel that the image trace picks up. So if we lower it all the way down to one, that means it'll pick up everything all the way down to the size of one pixel. And raising it up is pretty self-explanatory. So I like to use somewhere between 20, 25 for most textures. It usually looks pretty good to me, but again, this is gonna be more of a feel thing. It's really just gonna depend on the image that you're working with and the tastes that you have. So I think that's the sweet spot for this thing. I'm just gonna zoom in real quick and check out what I've done. All the round stuff is still round. All the corners are still corners. Everything looks good to me. So I'm gonna close out this image trace window and I'm gonna select it again. And now we're just gonna do the final step in making this a vector texture. And we're just gonna go up here to click this button that says expand. It's gonna convert this all into paths. And that's it. We've got ourselves a brand new texture that we just made from taking pictures of crap around our house. These textures can add a whole lot to your artwork. They usually look best punched out of designs just like this. Again, if you missed that video or you wanna learn how to use these textures after you've made them, just click this little guy right here and it'll take you right on over there. Well, hopefully that helps you guys out. I can't wait to see what you make with it. So please, if you post anything on Instagram, tag me in that and I'll check it out. Hit that like button for me, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you again in the next one. We do all have one of these, so let's use them for more than just sitting on the toilet and swiping through Tinder. I need to practice what I preach. Well, there he is. You managed to not interrupt me for an entire video. How amazing is that? I'm proud of you. Oh. <laughs> Close up of his asshole right on the camera.